My name is Professor H2O. Oh, forgot something. Welcome to Tamarack Nature Center. I know, I know, you are looking for Shannon and Stacy. They're not here. They needed a day off. <sighs> so, they're not here. I was hired to substitute, to teach you all about water. Well, I also have an intern with me, so please forgive me. I have an intern. Well, do you hear water running? Is that what it is? River! River! Excuse me, just one moment. Let me see where she is. River? River! River! What are you doing? Oh, hey, Professor. I'm just playing with the water. Isn't water wonderful? So soothing and calming and I just love the way it runs through my fingers and over my hands and I'm just getting some inspiration for my next poem. Oh my goodness, you are wasting water. Please turn it off. There is a finite amount of fresh clean water for us for cleaning and drinking. You are wasting it. Please get your head out of the fufu, kumbaya clouds, and come back to the laboratory. I'm not wasting water. I'm enjoying the water. I'm enjoying the feel and the emotion and the zen of the water. It's so wonderful. Don't you think it's so wonderful? Water is wonderful. Zen, zen, schmen. But water is a finite resource. Please turn it off. I have a demonstration for you. Fine, it's off. Thank you. And where is your lab coat? And what is all of the plants on your head for? Lab? Please, please come watch and lab? get your notebook. Lab coats are so restricting. I don't know where my notebook is. Ah, yo, interns. See you in a moment. Okay, so I have a demonstration. So I want you to think about all the water in the world. There is a lot, right? So this is a demonstration. It is not precise. But according to my calculations, there is if a representation. If you think about all the water in the world, this is how much water is in the world. Then. Do you think there's more salt water or fresh water? Hmm. River, what do you think? Hmm. Okay, river fall asleep. River, so there is more salt water because there's so much in the oceans. So, mostly salt water. So then what's left? Fresh water. So now one cup represents fresh water in the world. Now, question for you. Is all the fresh water in the world liquid and flowing? No, it is not. A lot of it is locked up, frozen in the polar ice caps at the poles of the earth. So, most of the fresh water frozen. So, is there very much liquid fresh water left? No! There is only this much. A drop or two? So, River, are you awake now? Yes, Professor. Oh, good. You're listening. So that means since there's only a little bit of fresh water in the world, should we be leaving the faucet on? Well, I mean, maybe not. No, we should not. It is very precious. Even though we are so spoiled in Minnesota, we have 10,000 lakes, not the precise number, we still need to conserve and preserve our precious water and fresh water. Okay? Yes, Professor. Oh, maybe you will pay better attention if we go outside. I love outside. It's so calming All right. and refreshing mm. and... It's wonderful. Don't you think it's wonderful outside? Oh, yes, it is wonderful. For science! 
get your outside gear, we go to the wetland, to the pond. Hello again. We have walked down to Tamarack Lake and we are going to sample. We've done some sampling, or I hope the river did sampling, catching some aquatic invertebrates. You know, water, bugs and critters with no backbone. So by seeing the water critters, if there's a big variety and those that can tolerate pollution, and low oxygen levels, that will tell us we have a clean wetland. But I must find River and find out what she caught. River, where is River? That silly intern got distracted again. River. Oh goodness, River is lollygagging again looking at something in the water. Hey, River. Well, hi, Professor. Hey, what did you find? What are you looking at? You're supposed to be sampling and collecting oh, data. Well, I did, but uh, these little things are so wonderful. They're, I don't know, they're like these little black torpedo shaped things that spin. Ah. It's so Zen. Ah, oh, Zen Schmen. Those sound to me like the specimen of whirligig beetles. Are they going quickly? Yes, they're spinning in circles. Oh, yes. Do they stay on the surface of the water? They do. They're right on top. They're all floaty. Oh, my goodness. Very fun fact. They have eyeballs. It's half of the eyeball can see above water and see below the water. Amazing. Ah. Now, I asked you to come collect and sample many invertebrates. What did you find? Oh, I did. I found many invertebrates. Do tell, and I will help so, from a distance, you know, distancing. I will help identify what you found. Well, I have a bunch of those whirly gig thingies. Yes, whirly gig beetles. Yes, whirly gig yes. beetles. And I caught a fish. <gasps> Oh yes, the children love the fish. Okay, so, okay. Did it have any little spikes on its back? Those would no. be the sticklebacks. No, it's a very smooth, very zen mm. fish. Oh yes, the fish. Okay, so zen. But hey, when I say invertebrate, you remember, dear, what the invertebrate means? Um, invertebrate, no backbone. Bingo! You were paying attention. So proud of you. Okay, so sh what kind of invertebrates did you find? Well, there are some little creatures in here that are really long and they have a forked tail that's ah. like two pieces. I see. Do they, are they quite tiny? Uh, some of them are very small and some of them are bigger. Ah, could they be damselfly nymphs or mayfly nymphs? Mm, probably one of those. Do they look very hairy? Mm. No, not more, so much. More streamlined, wiggling at the middle of the thorax? Yes. Th that would be a damselfly nymph. You know, vo the Odinata that uh, look very small when they fly, they have the, they, the water supports their, their young uh, nymph or larval life, and then they develop the ability to crawl up a plant uh, or uh, emerge from their exoskeleton, open their wings and fly the other part of their life. So oh, clean water, very important to them. Okay, else, well, what else do you find? There is something else here that uh, is really long and looks like a stick with legs. Oh my, could, hmm, let's see here. Could that be, not a walking stick, because that's terrestrial. Oh my goodness, so, so silly. Mm. What, mm. Hmm. what could it be, do you think? A water scorpion? I think it might be a water scorpion. All right, excellent, excellent. And then there is... I would like to get a closer look with the camera. I know I am unable to get closer than six feet. I also have something 
that looks like its legs look like oars. It's rowing. Oh my goodness, you found another invertebrate called a water boatman. Or if they are the legs up towards the sky or down towards the bottom of the pond. Um, Do they swim on their back or, or on the belly? Oh, it's so hard to tell. I think one of them is on their back and one of them is on their belly. Well, that is a very important characteristic to determine because if they, f they swim on their, their uh, ventral side, their belly, that means they are the water boatmen. If they swim on their back with the legs towards the sky, those are the back swimmers. Hmm. Yes, you must use your scientific observational skills. Who else? There is also something that looks a little, um, I don't know, he's kind of torpedo shaped and he's really long and he has six legs and he's sort of spotty and he has forks at the back of his abdomen. Forks? What are you talking about? Oh, I don't know, but you know what? Kind of looks like he can squirt water out of his butt. Oh my goodness, you are talking about a very, very special aquatic insect. A nymph called a dragonfly nymph. <gasps> so dragonfly. yes, those forks and squirting, they propel themselves by squirting water out of the backside of their abdomen so they can move quickly, not only to escape the predators, but also to catch their prey. Well, what about these little things that are scooting right across the top of the water? Oh, yes. So amazing. Oh, very, in I am glad you are so curious and you are following up. Yes, those would be the water striders or water skaters. And they have a very important principle that helps keep them above the water. One, they are lightweight. Two, they can, they, they have, um, hard to explain, with the surface tension of the water. At the ends of their legs, they have hairs. And the hairs create more surface area so they can stay above the water and not sink. I have a demonstration to explain this. It has to deal with surface tension. Are you ready for another demonstration? Another demonstration. Oh, please. You have lots and lots of learning to do, young girl. Yes, professor. Okay, please let me get my uh, supplies. All right, then. So, this is just a little very, very, very simple, rudimentary, uh, a demonstration to show surface tension. So those bugs you were seeing that were skating across the water or walking is because they were lightweight, but also the ends of their legs has those hairs to spread out the surface area. Well, to keep them above the water. Well, the droplets of water can hold themselves together. So to help keep them up. Now, I'm going to demonstrate leaving drops of water on this penny. Now, one might predict that only a few drops will go on there and they will roll right off, but not so, because surface tension plays a part. Watch how many drops I can put onto a penny. You can try this at home. Each drop when you drip a drop on slowly, they will hold on together and with the surface tension so it does not roll right off. As I increase the number of drops, they do not roll off. I would have thought it would have come off drips ago, but now it continues to hold. I have a relatively, oh, it finally broke. The surface tension broke. But this element and principle of surface tension helps keep the water striders and water skaters above the water instead of sea.